Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how to make this, I think I'm going to call it a triple panel card or a trifold card, something like that. I made this during Monday's Facebook Live. It was a really nice live. It's the first one of 2021. This is how the card looks on the front and then you open it up and you have this. So it's actually, I've when I was putting it together, I thought to myself, I think this is just one half of one of the showstopper cards that I've done. So if I find it, I'll link it up here and I'll link the showstopper style cards as well. Because I think you could just, double this, so add another panel and have it so you pull it out both sides, I think it'd look great. Now those of you that watched the live, I left these panels because I was just, I thought, you know what, sometimes it's good to step away and come back to it later. And I'm glad I did because I'm really pleased now with how it looks. I like the real crisp white bold letters against that teal colour and I framed all of the circles, which was something I spoke about during the live. And I've also popped some stars, slightly smaller, on the acetate, there's actually acetate behind this so I could stick, there we go, you can see it when it catches the light. It's just a really fun card and then you have all this space on the back to be able to write your message. So I'm gonna just mat and layer here and I'll stamp something on a later date when I know who I'm gonna give it to. And I've got some glossy accents on that lovely image there with the macaroons and that's what I've continued throughout. So I'm gonna show you how to make this card. Okay, so for the main card base, you want a piece of 10 and a half by seven and along the ten and a half side you want to score at half an inch and five and a half and then this is the piece that goes in the middle so that kind of pops out and this is ten by seven and along the ten inch side you want to score at two and a half five and seven and a half and then I have this piece which is five by seven which is going to go onto the very front of the card and then I have this piece here but I need to cut some pink but that's going to be on the front of the card and that is four and a half by six and a half and then you also want your matte layer which would be four and three quarters by six and three quarters. I just need to cut some more of this pink so that that will mat against it. Um, but that, like I said, I'll do all that um, later on. So that's all the scoring that you need. Okay, so first of all, this one here, I'm just going to fold it in half. And then this one, I'm just gonna fold back. So you've got a little tab. And that is the one that you're gonna stick this onto. Um, you can do it now if you want, I'm going to do it later on, but you just add glue onto that tab and stick that piece on there, like so, so you have that long trifold, triple panel. What I want to do, is, first of all, is work on this piece here. Now I am going to just fold and burnish just so I can really see where I'm working. So you just want to create an M fold, so a mountain valley and a mountain. But I am going to kind of then flatten it again, just so I can... It just helps me see those panels a bit better when I've just folded them. Now the middle two panels here is where I want to start die cutting and this is what took the time for me but I'm going to die cut all of this and I'm also going to create these edges here. Now the edges are using my 5x7 excellent edge in the portrait but the landscape ones would fit as well so if you've got those um, that's the ones with the, the dragonflies and what else is on that one? Anyway, I'll link it because you might like that one as well. So I'm gonna use the stars again, so I really like the stars and I've already prepared a ton of those. Now these will cut the whole piece out because these are meant to go on the edges of the tower fold dies, which is what these are part of an addition to. But I wanna show you how you can just partially die cut these to create this lovely effect. So I'm just gonna lay one down on the end here and with some tape, You just want to just kind of clip it over the edges, but just slide it up so the stars just kind of line up with the edge there. And I'm just going to pop a bit of tape on there. Now I'm going to use my larger die machine because it's seven inches wide. But I do also have these different designs, but in six inches. So if you'd still like to create this effect, then look at the six by six ones because then you'll be able to use them through a standard machine. Basically, when you do a partial die cut, Anything that's between your cutting plates will cut. So all I want to do is just cut the stars. I don't want to cut this line here. So I'm just going to pop this plate all the way through this side. And I'm just going to sit it just over there. Now I'm not worried about these outer ones because they're not actually on the card, they're hanging over the edge. But now if I just push this into the machine so it catches and just pass that through. 
And then I'll just bring that back again. And then if I just carefully take that away, you'll see you get that really cool edge on your cardstock. So I'm just going to repeat that again on this end. Okay, so you can see now I've got that really cool effect and that's going to sit inside the card. But I also now want to create this here. So I've got my circle dies and I'm going to pretty much copy this same arrangement and I'm going to die cut all these stars. Now the stars are just from the same die set and you can see you get quite a few here. But I'm just going to pop the circles down like so. Like I said, trying to roughly get it in the same pattern as that and I'm just going to pass this through and then I'll be back once I've cut everything out. So that's everything now die cut in the centre and I've just burnished those score lines again. Next I want to add my acetate that's completely optional, you might just want to keep it as it is. You don't even have to cut anything in here and of course you can use any edge dies and any other things that you have in your stash. But with this here, I'm going to flip it over and I've got two sheets. These are just under two and a half by seven. So it's just about, it's about one eighth of an inch under just so it, it just sits perfectly within that section. So what I use during the live is my thin, the thinnest one I have actually and it's this one here and I think it's it's either two or three mil red tape and I'm going to go around on here rather than the acetate because I want to make sure that it doesn't go over any of the stars because I don't want any tape that's sticky you know obviously being visible so I think I'm going to be okay with this one the one I done in the live I had a couple of them where it was you know going to slightly go into the stars but this one seems to be okay so you can see what I'm doing there I'm just coming in slightly I'm not going right up to the the outer edge or to the score line there just coming in a little bit because that will sit with the acetate size and if for some reason I do have anything that's a little bit sticky just go over it with your anti-static powder with your little embossing buddies anything you use when you use your embossing powders and that will remove the stickiness so I'll check that afterwards but I'm just going to carry on and finish this one and then I've just taken the backing off the red tape and I'm just very carefully laying the acetate over the top like so. And just run my finger over and I can't actually feel any tape, anything sticky at all. I have gone down a bit further with the acetate. I can just see, you won't be able to see it, but I can see a little bit just popping out the side there. But now, just make sure when you fold it, the acetate's not catching anywhere. But you can see now I've got that window effect. So it'll allow me to be able to stick those little images that I've done. Now we can start attaching this to the card. So I'm just going to run my glue. I'm going to use the Kalau just because I'm covering this fiddly you know area with the stars it just doesn't dry so quick as a you know a white glue like the gloss cosmic shimmer that I use. This just gives me that little extra time and it will add a lot of strength. So I'm going to work on this side first of all and I'm just going to bring it up so the stars are just touching that score line just slightly under and you can see it sits perfectly because the the edge dies are seven inches high and that's what we cut the card to and then I'm going to fold that one flat and do the same on this side and then I'm going to keep it like that and I'm just going to close this one over and that way you know it's going to fold flat and then you have that it looks really cool. Now that, without this tab, is a really nice effect and I've done this style card before. I've done it as the Starfold card and I actually made five more and I stuck them all back to back so the whole thing would open. I can hear some of the acetate. I'm going to have to trim that. Can you hear it? I didn't see that, so but I can just trim that because that would bug me. Yeah, I'll remove that. Anyway, that's all done. And then whilst that's still drying, I'm going to use I'm going to use the quick grab glue for this one actually. I'm just going to add the glue all down here. 
and then I'm just going to again sit it over there and just line up this piece with the whole card because it's exactly the same size. Okay, so now you have the card shape and you're here. There's no more, well, maybe a little bit, but anyway, I can get away with that. I've just trimmed it off. So next we just need to add all the final decorations. So this is the front of the card. So I have this one, but I'm also going to cut a piece of, like I said before, four and three quarters by six and three quarters in the pink, and that will go on top. I've then cut this oval and I've stamped this lovely Daisy May image with the macaroons which match this paper which I actually got off a lady off of eBay she was selling um, loads of loose 12 by 12 papers that I purchased and I'm also going to stamp the hope you have a sweet day sentiment which I've already got on this one here and that's from the creative stamping truly scrumptious stamp set it, the oval dies are the tonic studio oval dies and then the image there is this one from the daisy may afternoon tea again all of this will be linked on my blog and then I'm also going to lay down the happy B day again using my chunky alphabet set and I've already gone ahead and cut all of that. I've also cut all of the frames using the circles. I'll put the sizes of the circles and everything on my blog but you'll see those frames are going to sit over that and then I've got the same for that side. I've got the happy B day already cut and I've also gone ahead if I bring it all over here I've cut all of the stars and I've stamped more of the little macaroons which are also in that stamp set just here in the colours that match here and those are going to be stuck on the acetate windows. So I'm now going to spend, probably take me about 10 minutes to get all this stuck down. is now everything stuck down. I think it looks really really cool. I might add some more little stars in the centres of these ones like I did on that one there. You can see them like the orange one there. And I also added glitter, my sparkle pen. Can you see all that glitter on the stars? So I might do that. I'm going to do the glossy accents now because lots of people always ask me about this and how I get such a smooth finish and there's there's really no kind of trick to it. I guess the one thing I do is once I lay the the nozzle down, I don't lift it up until I'm finished. So you want to make sure that you've got no air bubbles in it. So always do a little test. So I'll just take my pin out and just squeeze that out. See, there's there's a bit of a, a block in there. See, the only thing I do find that this does block up, you've got to kind of get past that. There we go. You can just see it's just loads of it's just come out there now. But now that's ready to go and I know there's no air in it. And I only want to cover what would be the glass. So now I'm laying it down. I'm not really squeezing too much. I'm actually moving around more of the the medium rather than squeezing more out as well. So if you do get quite thick with it, just yeah, move it around rather than squeeze more out. And it will always go on cloudy, but it will dry clear. So the thicker you do it, the longer it will take to dry. It is a glue. I mean, it's a you know, a lot of people do use this as an adhesive. More people especially myself, use it more for glossy accents. It's great for your underwater theme cards, adding it onto the fish. It's nice to add onto eyes if you've got any stamped images, little characters. just gives them a nice little gloss. But yeah, don't worry that it goes on cloudy. And I like to make sure that there's no bubbles so I'm you know there I can't see any there but I'm just really making sure that I've covered everything so it's a completely covered surface there's there's no little joins anywhere 
and then lift it off. So if I bring that up now, you see I've got a really nice shine on that. And then once, I mean it's pretty clear anyway, so I've not gone too thick with it, but once that dries, it will look more like that. See it's a little bit mottled? There we go. It's a really lovely effect. You can see that this one is clearer slightly. It's just got a little bit of a, a cloudiness to it there. But um, yeah, I don't want to tamper with that one too much now because it's a little bit bouncy. I am just going to lift up this side, keep it level while it's drying. Like, there we go, that will do. And I'll just show you this one one more time. For the back here, just do, oh, oh, look what I've just done. Luckily, I'm going to be covering that. Um, just do the same mats and layers sizes for the front that I mentioned and pop that on the back. I'll just get rid of that glue because that's all going to get covered. But there you have it, two triple panel cards or trifold cards. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm really pleased with how these ones have turned out. So, And also, one other thing, look closely, but can you tell me the two mistakes on this card? That's all I'm going to say. If you watch the live, don't cheat because you will already know. But there are two mistakes. Once you see them, you know. <laughs> but we'll leave it there. So anyway, thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye.